You know, it's really fun having clients in any business. It's, it's fun having a client. You know, you get to work with them. They, they pay you money. It's cool. They do things with you and you, you collaborate on something that becomes greater than the individuals that you two are. But getting them onboarded is such a pain. I don't even, I don't even want to do it. So I don't, I just have automations do it for me. When I need to onboard somebody, let's get a list of things. First of all, they need to book a discovery call. I have a tidy cow, right? They need, they need to get a link, right? I have, I have a website where you can go to riceproductive.com slash notion hyphen consulting and you can submit a form, right? And then they have to book a discovery call. And then I have to send them a contract if it goes well. And they need to have Google folders made. And then the whole time I need to email important things to them. And it's just not, I don't, I'm not a fan. Let's just say that. I am not a fan of doing all of the work. I have templates for this, which make a lot of things easier. Like when I have like recurrent client work or like a scope of work agreement for a project, I have customer feedback service, all these different things. I don't, I don't really want to send it manually. I don't want to manually email. I do not like email. So I've solved this with Zapier. In Zapier, I have an entire folder set up for an ocean consulting. It keeps getting bigger. I keep finding more things I can automate. And good Lord, this is overwhelming, but I'll show you step-by-step step my process. So first of all, if you were to submit a form, this triggers something in Tally, which is my form software, and this is the webhook, and it takes the specific form, that is this guy, and if it gets a new submit, as you can see, the event is a new response. So when if I do a test trigger, so when somebody puts this in here, it creates a database item. And what does this create the database item for in Notion? It goes to my CRM, it puts their name in and their email in, and it puts their values that they put into the form, into my CRM. So if we go into my CRM, we look at me, I'm a cheap guy and I don't want to pay myself. <laughs> I don't want to pay myself anything. So I put these in here and it automatically puts me in as lead. And then from there, what happens is it sends a Slack message. So I have a Slack and I really like keeping my team updated on how the sales pipeline is going. So it'll just be like, hey, Dean, we just had a new client submit form. This is how much they want to spend. And honestly, this is one of the most exciting Slack messages I'll ever get, which makes me feel better about Slack in general. And then it'll send a follow-up email. So as you can see here, I don't really like having to manually do things. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, thanks for filling out the form. If you're interested in our services, this is our discovery call. Just so you know, everything beyond the discovery call, it's billable. So like if, if you wanna work with me, like it is a paid service, because a lot of people for some reason don't seem to get that, even though I put like this monthly value and project value in there. And this just articulates it even more further. And um, if they really want to sign up with me, then they're qualified. So. It also adds them to my MailChimp CRM. And then the next step after that is a discovery call. So say they do submit a discovery call, that whole next sequence is automated as well. They book a call with me based on that link. And then this is a trigger that says, okay, did they make a new booking with me? Yes. And it will only continue if the booking type title contains discovery. And I only have one of the booking types named discovery and that's what I send them. And then it formats the date into a much better thing to look at. And then it sends an email to them it basically says, Hey, thank you for sending up a time. You should have received an email with Google slash meet links. Simple, easy. I don't have to type that out every time it magically says it. It also tells me that that happened in Slack and then it finds that CRM page it made and then it moves them along in the pipeline. So then when I, for example, would discovery call myself, this would trigger and it would bring this in. And it also creates a mirror board so I can do a brainstorming session with them on the call and it puts the mirror board into their client portal resource page. And then this tells me exactly what manual things I need to do. So I need to do next steps for this person. I need to do pre-call work, relate the mirror board to their client CRM page. Relations don't work with Zapier, so I have to do that manually. And it's like, if the client's won, do this. And then my favorite thing on the planet is this thing. So essentially, I made a very long one here, which is like a 17, 18 stepper, which does all of the onboarding completely from a file management perspective. Let's go here to my Google Drive and go to client work and then I go here and this is a, a trigger. So what happens is all I need to do is put an email in here that is matched to my CRM and then this whole trigger happens. So basically when a new folder comes up in here and then I find CRM and it needs to match the email that I put in there. For example, I put admin at riseproductive.com or 
pasted it, this whole thing's gonna trigger. So if I just manually run this, so I don't have to wait, as usually it takes 15 minutes between zaps. So I'm triggering on two new items. So it finds the recurrent client contract, the project contract template. It creates an overall client folder, creates a subfolder, creates external meeting folders, and it makes the entirety of the contracts, updates them in the CRM, tells me exactly what I need to do regarding what access I need to give them, and tells me to turn these contracts into PDFs. So I go back to client work, all clients, you can see this made the Dimitri Panici one, and the contracts were created. So basically all I needed to do prior to this was input some things into the CRM, and it would have told me like, hey, make sure that you put like, you know, the contract creation date, and it would auto spit those things out. But I don't need to do anything besides turn it into a PDF and send it to them on DocuSign. And then once they sign it on DocuSign, another automation comes through and you can see where this kind of stuff is amazing. Because then I have two different automations. Are they project based or are they hourly based? For the hourly based ones, I have an automation set up to where if they sign the hourly one, it uploads the signed contract and then it creates a client in toggle and it creates a project in toggle so that I can track the time I spend on them so I can properly bill them. And also it'll send them an email with the request for the initial security deposit and with all the information that they need for their client portal and my two booking pages for when we want to keep in touch for my current clients. And then for ones that are project based, I have another automation. So they should get basically, it'll find, it'll be like, all right, did this have a sign come through? Yes. Okay. Let's create a task in Notion for myself to give them access to the, the Slack channel. And what's really cool is it'll go through a whole process of filtering as to whether it was a contract type of project or not. And then it will find the numbers for the project value in here. And then it will multiply it, do some formatting to get it to come into Stripe correctly. Then it will create some tasks for me to say, all right, Let's do some more onboarding tasks. It'll make a Slack channel for them. It'll put a Slack welcome message, and then it will create a price that is based off of the project. So I essentially do a 50% security deposit. So all this stuff auto spits out a 50% security deposit request that then will be sent in an email to the client, let them know about the Slack channel, and once again, give them some useful links. And then also it will upload signed contract into my Google Drive so I don't have to manually do it. You can see where all this could be helpful for you in your business and how obviously it's helpful for mine. If you want help with this, make sure to go check out my services down below and check out this one on how to improve your productivity even more.